from the studios of Farm Journal Broadcast. It's an update from the wildfire ravaged Southern Plains. In Texas, ranchers relive the March blaze. Support continues to pour in as ranchers work to rebuild fencing. Plus, we'll meet an Oklahoma woman giving back to victims of the fire. And a Kansas community says thank you. Ag Day, brought to you by the dependable, longest lasting Chevy Silverado. Good morning, I'm Clint Griffiths. It's been roughly four months since wildfires swept through the Southern Plains. This morning, we return to the farms and ranches impacted most by the blaze. In early March, dry, windy conditions sparked a storm of fires burning more than one and a half million acres. By state, in Texas, it was a half million acres. In Oklahoma, 320,000 spilling over into neighboring Kansas with 711,000 acres burned. And in Colorado, 30,000 acres. To put it in other terms, the scorched land makes up about the size of one state, Delaware. Much of it agricultural land used for cow-calf production. Lost in the flames, people, pasture, livestock, and more than 18,000 miles of fencing. According to a new study, wildfires are growing in frequency. Satellite analysis showing the number of large wildfires in the Great Plains is up 350% over the last three decades, with the total area burned each year increasing fourfold. The Great Plains uh, used to be very frequently burned, from what we understand, through uh, natural wildfires and also through the application of fire uh, by Native Americans in this region. But after European settlement, we've been very effective at fire suppression in this area. Um, and so we haven't had very many large wildfires over the last century. And so we don't generally think of the Great Plains as an area that's very prone to wildfire. Now, regardless of why, the impact is nearly overwhelming. And while timely spring rains have helped heal the Southern Plains, Betsy Gibbon went to the Panhandle of Texas where the smoke is gone, but those memories are still burning. It's easy to see these Texas fields are ready to plant as another season is upon Ockletree County farmer Ryan Johnson. But it's much harder to see from inside the cab where memories burn images of wildfire raging across the countryside, still too fresh to call the past. I was actually on this tractor right here, and we got the call, and I just suddenly looked up, and there it was. The Parrington wildfire in the panhandle of Texas rolled through, untamed and without discrimination. In Texas, half a million acres chart, the State Animal Health Commission puts the figure at 2,500 head of cattle and 1,900 hogs lost to the flames. This land right here to the north of us and then way out here to the south, um, this is the area kind of where the fire originated. Um, within five miles of here is where the fire started. Recollections many people share together in the panhandle of Texas. I was up at the elevator and we've got big liquid tanks we haul fertilizer around in and we started filling up tanks with water and bring it down here to help. It's hard to believe in March the terrain could look so different. Today the grass is gaining strength. It's grown back, not grazable yet, but it's starting to grow back. These re recent rains are really helping us out. Moisture Texas producers don't normally see. The National Weather Service in Amarillo says pockets of Ockletree County saw five to six inches of precipitation this spring. 200 to 300 percent of normal. So you can kind of see it's recovering pretty well with the moisture we had. If this were a drought year, this grass would not look this good. Yet ranchers say some producers may be able to put livestock back out this fall, while for others it may be years depending on damage. Pretty much anywhere where it's green and there's not any brown grass or any weeds coming up is where the fire burned. While restoring forage is a slow process, the community response has been fast. It was pretty neat to see how a small town reacts to a disaster like this to see where all the people came in. They all helped each other out. Nobody was fighting. Nobody was angry. They all just worked together. And for what one common goal was to make sure that everybody was taken care of. It was pretty neat. Life here is slowly getting back to normal. It's come back really well. Growing grass, rebuilding fence, and planting crops. These producers are resilient. I'm sure there's people that are hurting worse off than they're even talking about. But their progress may be harder to see. Reporting for Ag Day, I'm Betsy Gibbon. As Betsy mentioned, timely rains have helped much of the Southern Plains recover from those wind-whipped fires. But following the fire, this is what the range looked like. 
black and burned all vegetation burned off. State agencies have been holding meetings about range management since the fires broke out with pastures and grasslands scorched. Many wonder how long they needed to wait to put livestock back out and whether or not portions will even regrow. Just understanding what's going on and, and learning what you can do to help it will keep will keep ranchers around here up and going. These fires, they don't respect state lines and our plant communities really, you know, are growing across these different states. There occurred at a time of the year we might conduct a prescribed burn, for instance, but under the wildfire conditions, uh, you know, much more intense and, and uh, will cause a lot more, at least potential damage to the plants. Although it burned off all of the, all of the above ground vegetation, the roots and everything are still alive and so those plants are are able to come back. You know, how soon can, can uh, producers put cattle on? I think there's most places uh, have sufficient forage where they could start grazing uh, any time. As part of the recovery, we wanted to help our own corporate cousins over at Drovers and the Farm Journal Foundation teamed up with the Howard G. Buffett Foundation for the Million Dollar Wildfire Relief Challenge. The goal? To help support ranchers as they work to rebuild fencing across the Southern Plains. And so far, your generosity is paying off. Some $640,000 is poured in, and the Howard G. Buffett Foundation says they'll double it up to a million dollars. So we're almost there. To learn more, go to the wildfirerelieffund.org. And this effort isn't the only one helping folks impacted by the fires. That help has been plentiful. Up next, we'll see how people are giving back, sharing words of encouragement, and helping those families rebuild. The next generation of heavy-duty engine oils are here. Introducing Delo 400 with Isosyn Advanced Technology. The new Delo 400 product line is bigger and better than ever. The devastating wildfire in southwestern Kansas caused unprecedented destruction. Stories are pouring out about the selfless acts of people to save lives, livestock, and property. Stephen Kelly Hazen of Clark County narrowly escaped the blaze. A few days later, they started to receive letters from school children, giving them words of encouragement. Photojournalist Dan Donnert from Kansas State University documents their path from the ashes. We went to the feed store this morning. This, this guy, the feed store, the, the, there's a father and son, and you know, the son comes out and he hands us two envelopes. The letters were sent out with a truckload of steel posts that were delivered to the feed store and any farmer or rancher that needs them can go in and pick them up and then you get a letter from, from the students from that class. So it's pretty touching to... Well, lots know. and lots of and, the, and one letter that the child was going to send us $10. She, he, yeah. she had $10 so she's going to send $10 to help with expenses. This one letter says, uh, we want to cheer you up, hope to cheer you up for your loss and your fire. I got a joke to tell you. What do you call a, a cow that goes to church? And then she put a holy cow. And you know, we, it chokes me up. The I, idea that they're thinking about you and that they care is what, oh, it's just so cute. Very yeah. humbling. In our own effort to help along with some of the donations, we've also received well wishes like this one. Friends, was saddened to see and read about the wildfire in Oklahoma, Kansas, and Texas. Can't imagine all the work it will take to build the fences there. Here's $200 for the help. It isn't much, but we want to help. And this one, we're a small 4-H club. Our club mainly focuses on animals, including llamas, pigs, goats, rabbits, and poultry. We're enclosing a donation to help with the devastating wildfire relief effort. Critter people have to stick together. Near Ashland, Kansas, Mark Gardner's home was badly burned in that fire. Luckily, he and his family were able to escape the flames, but rebuilding has been extensive. That includes fencing, where their operation lost more than 260 miles of fencing. So far, they've repaired and replaced about 40 miles of it. While the task is daunting, the support has been nothing short of amazing. When we look at uh, all the events since March 6th and what the community has done, and, and quite frankly, what America has done for the community, it's, it's been overwhelming. Uh, it's been just very humbling to see so many people come so far and so fast with such precious resources to help all of us. And so we all thought that that would uh, lose its energy after a while, but it hasn't. 
Uh, people continue to come. People continue to help. People, uh, you know, continue to send supplies and support. Support is pouring in, especially on the fencing front. Up next, we'll take a look at the need and talk about how you can pitch in and support your fellow neighbors. Get the roots your crops need by getting Radiate first. Visit lovelandproducts.com slash radiate. See your CPS dealer today. As a wildfire swept through the high plains in early March, a staple of cattle country burned with it. More than 18,000 miles of fencing destroyed across the plains, and rebuilding that infrastructure is ongoing. Betsy Gibbons back in the panhandle of Texas in the heart of the Perryton wildfire. Farmers in Ockletree County, Texas are busy planting another crop like they do every year. But this isn't the only job weighing on Ryan Johnson this season. We lost 10,000 acres. His farm and ranch taking a direct hit during the March wildfires. And we lost about 16 miles of fence. We're about 75% done. And right now we're just going back into where cedar posts have burned off and we're replacing them with steel posts. Quick work for this cattle country necessity. It's a legacy infrastructure for producers. Some of these posts standing since Taft was president. With the fence rebuilding efforts, probably uh, metal stakes are a big deal because a lot of these fences, as you can see here to the north of us, it's three, four, five metal stakes and then it's a cedar post and all those cedar posts are burned to the ground. Where those posts once stood, fire left behind weaker, brittle spots in the wire, leaving standing fence not in the best shape. Now, even though some of the fence is still standing because of the heat of the fire, it will still need to be replaced. The main recovery effort right now is replacing all these cedar stakes with actual metal posts going into the ground. So that's probably our biggest need, that and wire, barbed wire. Both an ongoing process and a strain for the checkbook. Some fence lines in the plains cost roughly $10,000 per mile to build, and it may not be covered by insurance. Wherever there was a wooden post that burned, this is a weaker spot in the wire. We interviewed one producer who did not want to be identified. His operation was at the front of the fire. He said hundreds of miles of fence still needs repair. How is the rebuilding process coming along for a lot of these producers? It's slow. You've got to go through a certain process rebuilding if you want the assistance that they're offering. I would say by the middle of next year, we ought to have good grass back. Fence lines all, all ought to be up. In Canadian Texas, the Canadian Animal Health and Nutrition Store has been a main drop-off location for wildfire donations. They say very few producers are completely done reconstructing their boundaries. It uh, will take several months to rebuild all the fence. Most people are working on their perimeter fences, and then when they finally get a little more time, they'll start working on the interior fences. Uh, you know, a crew of four will take um, five to six days to do a mile of fence. So when you're looking at 500 to 600 miles of fence, it's going to take a while. He says calls come in nearly every day about fencing supplies. The good donated items are going fast. If they want to donate materials, it's wire and T-posts. I mean, that is, that is what they're after. Back in the field, Johnson's work continues. So far, this is our last 50 of 700 acres. Moving forward, planting toward the future, knowing a new season brings promise, leaving the pains of the past to slowly fade into the Texas prairie. Reporting for Ag Day, I'm Betsy Gibbon. Thanks, Betsy. As I mentioned earlier, Drovers and the Farm Journal Foundation and the Howard G. Buffett Foundation have teamed up to make fencing a priority. All of the donations from the Million Dollar Wildfire Relief Challenge are going toward fencing. The grants issued by the Working Ranch Cowboys Association will pay for both materials and or labor to put new fences up. At an estimated cost of $10,000 a mile and 18,000 miles destroyed, that need is enormous. Ranchers like the gardeners say how the work gets done is a strategy in itself. Well, we received a lot of help from, from lots of folks in, in doing that. And we have two professional crews that you know, one of the things our family made the decision to do, we have to do what we do for a living, and that's, you know, raising cattle and taking care of cattle, and we're not professional fence builders, and the good side of this for the community, and, and uh, we'll have much better fences than we had before the fire, so we, we kind of joke that we're living in a, a very gated community now with very nice fences. 
If you'd like to pitch in, go to wildfirereliefund.org to learn more. Help has come not just from friends and family, but kids across the country are pitching in. Up next, we'll meet a young lady from Oklahoma who saw a need and decided to donate the best way she knew how. Adults aren't the only ones setting an example of how to help families devastated by wildfire. Story after story pouring in from kids, 4-H'ers, FFA members and others seeking to help in their own way. Well, in Oklahoma, our friends at Son of TV introduce us to one young woman who decided to share nearly a year's worth of hard work with those in need. During the week of the Oklahoma Youth Expo this year, we had a lot of people approach us about wanting to do something to support their fellow uh, people in agriculture from Northwest Oklahoma that suffered through the wildfires and we really didn't know what to do and one morning during the show Senator Eddie Fields came to me whose kids were showing there and said hey my daughter wants to donate one of her three show steers to the fire victims and maybe we could auction it off in the cell of champions and I said I think that's a great idea let me go check with my board of directors and they said absolutely I just asked them you know if they thought it'd be a good idea to, to donate one of the animals to the youth expo to be able to donate that for uh, fire victims relief and in visiting with Tyler Norvell and, and the uh, board of OIE that they decided that you know after we donated the calf that they would use those proceeds that they generated from that from that animal would be used for uh, the kids that lost projects in the fires. We weren't expecting help from them. Uh, everybody brought hay and then they donated their steer and we're greatly thankful. If I was in the situation I know they'd help me or they would help us out if anyone else would, if I needed it, some, somebody would stand up. I think it teaches our 4-H members that when they see a need, that they need to, um, on their own, step out and find a solution for that. So they see that repetitively um, through the 4-H program, and so then when they encounter a challenge or an issue in their area or here in the state of Oklahoma, I think it really encourages them to say, even though I'm a young adult, um, I can help in some way and I can find a solution. And that's why the program is so great, because we have um, what most people would call kids uh, really making a big difference in other people's lives. That's what you do when someone's when someone's down you bring them back up and I'm just grateful to be in that community and in part of that organization where we don't even know them and they're 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 paying it forward to us and and that's just a really really close to my heart. The livestock show folks spend the whole year competing against each other but when tragedy strikes we're one team we help each other. And you know, the agriculture industry is under a lot of attack, especially production agriculture from outside groups that don't understand what we do. And I think that's drawn us closer together over the last several decades as 4-H and FFA students. And yet they've been able to see the generations before them and what they've done to make not only their local communities better, but our state and nation. I think that's just the Oklahoma standard. You know, we reach out in disasters, whether it's man-made or uh, natural. We, we step up, you know, we make a difference, you know, and it's just, I think that's part of what Oklahomans are, you know, we, we, we care, we're compassionate about our fellow man in this state, and we do whatever we can to help out. Just wonderful. The town says thank you in their own words after the break. In the Country, sponsored by Kubota. Tractors, hay tools, utility vehicles, mowers, and more. Visit Kubota.com today. Hi, we're the Betchart family. I'm Jenny and this is my husband Shane and our kids Peyton, Ethan, and Gentry. We're from Ashland, Kansas and we want to say thank you for all of the kindness that we have received. Um, on March 6th we had a really, really, really bad Monday, but since then we have been blessed beyond measure. For rural America, I am so grateful for all the hay and the support that you guys have provided. It's just been, it's been amazing. I mean, we can't ask for, we can't ask for anything better. So from the bottom of our hearts to all of you, we say thank you very, very much. We were just friends and neighbors, but now we're family. That from residents in and around Ashland, Kansas, a feeling of thanks in a time of so much destruction and heartache. The town saved by winter wheat fields, now harvested and preparing for another season replanting their lives, and hopefully this scorched past gives way to greener pastures for their future. To learn more about how you can help families and communities survive and rebuild, please go to wildfirereliefund.org to learn more. 
the farming and agricultural community is strong. We're even stronger together. From all of us here at Ag Day, I'm Clinton Griffiths. Thanks for watching. Ag Day is powered by Ram Trucks, America's longest lasting pickups.